I'm going to download Tails and install it. I'm going to install this on a virtual machine. It's highly recommended that you use a USB stick. That's what it's designed for, to protect your host operating system. Install it on a USB stick. It keeps that separate, so if you downloaded any malware, uh, it removes it. It doesn't store anything to memory and protects your machine. So you need the ISO file to download. You can do this in a safe way using BitTorrent. I include a video by Mental Outlaw. I did a really good video uh, about downloading tails for the Ultra Paranoid. So download the ISO to a directory path of your choosing. So you set up your directory, give it a name, store the ISO file in it, and then you'll be using that to mount the ISO to the virtual machine. So you have your virtual machine here, you go on to settings and you make some changes. So you need to make sure it's set to Linux and Debian 64 for Tails. You can go through your system settings, but the most important thing is the storage. And it's from here that you want to mount the ISO file that you've just downloaded for Tails. So you click on this little disk here, mount the ISO file, and you can change the settings how you want for system, so how much memory you want to use, the CPU, try and improve the performance. And that's pretty much it. Um, you don't really need to go through anything else, you don't need any bi-directional sharing of folders or anything, it's not what Tails is designed for. So then we can hit the start button. <clears throat> and this will boot to Tails. It doesn't take too long. And here we go. Now we've got problems with the display and the resolution. So you'll need to toggle around with this in VirtualBox changing the display, what screen mode you're going to choose until you get something that looks more like a, a full screen. And then you can get something like this. But the resolution is not right because we're cutting off the bottom of the uh, display of tails. So within tails you've got to change the resolution. As you can see, it connects directly to Tor straight away. It wants you to connect to it. That's what the Tails is used for, for accessing the, the dark web. And as I say, if you downloaded anything malicious, this can wipe it from memory. It won't infect your main operating system, your host computer. So lots of uh, tools and applications that come with Tails. As we can see, we've got persistent storage. Now you can't use that with a virtual machine, so that's another reason why you might want to use a USB key. So if you did want to download anything, you can use persistent storage. It partitions your USB key and keeps some space for the storage. You can use uh, a key that's got encryption with it, like an encrypted folder, so you can store important uh, and confidential files on it. But you can't do that with a virtual machine, so that's another reason to use USB. You've got Thunderbird, which is like a security enhanced email client. It's better than Outlook for security. KeyPass, which is my recommended password manager. Productivity tools with LibreOffice. We've got OnionShare for secure sharing of files. We've got the Tor browser itself, the Tor connection. We've got Electrum wallet, which is an anonymous wallet. You don't need any ID verification to set it up. And we've got some other security enhancing applications, hashtags for files, scrubbing of metadata. And then we've actually got some text editors as well. So if you're doing some coding, uh, you can use these as well. Pretty useful. Vim's a very popular text editor. And here we have uh, extra utilities as well and system configuration, troubleshooting, tails. Let's go ahead and change the resolution in tails. So let's head back in. So to do this, we need to head to System Tools. So 
let's ignore this Tor connection display head to applications system tools and then we go to settings we need to hit the display button which we can't quite see here I'm just going to go directly to it but you can scroll down you'll be able to see that so we click displays And then we click on resolution, which is 4 by 3 at the moment, 4 to 3 ratio. Then we want 16 to 9, and that should sort it out. And it has, we've got a full screen now. So it's displays, and then it's on to resolution, you change the resolution there. So that's that sorted, so let's head to Tor now, let's connect to it. So what we have to do is uh, click the connect to Tor automatically. We can configure a Tor bridge for extra obfuscation, we won't do this here, we'll just connect straight to Tor. And then we hit the Start, the start Tor Browser button. And I've just clicked this a few too many times, so we'll have to close some of these browsers down. I can get impatient, sometimes when you're running things on virtual machines they can be a bit slower. So the default page is tails that it heads to. Let's do a quick search and find a Onion website on the dark web. If we just close these browsers down, bear with me. So you see there's a search bar here for DuckDuckGo. That's like the privacy enhanced search engine. So we're going to use that and head to the Onion version of Facebook. So we could directly put the Onion address in this uh, address bar here if we knew it. I don't actually know the Onion address for Facebook, the dark web version, I never used it. We can also see the circuit for the Tor rel relays. It actually shows you the countries where your Tor nodes are, are situated and then it, it lands on the Tails web page. So let's enter in the DuckDuckGo search bar here, uh, Facebook. And then we're on the search engine. DuckDuckGo tends to display onion addresses on it. It will display more about the dark web than a normal search engine. Let's type in Facebook onion site. And there we go to the right hand side. We've actually got the onion address here. So what we need to do is just click on this link. This should look the same as the normal Facebook website, and it does. I've never actually used this, I don't know what features it has, but hopefully it's good for privacy.